The crown jewel of Formula One and also perhaps the biggest challenge. Monaco plays host to round 13. It's going to be a wild one. And tonight we have Z46 in the booth with me. Uh, he is unable to drive. He is missing his wheel, waiting for it to come in. So tonight he will be our special guest in the booth. Z, what's up? How are you? Uh, not too much right now. Uh, you know, we all just kind of decided to stop working. So we're... And the booth for a change, hoping to get some action, you know, can't miss out on the race in action completely, so I had to find a way to wriggle my way in. <laughs> It'll be a fun night, but it's going to be a very challenging night, so I know that we were talking about it in practice. What spots do you think are going to be the most difficult for the drivers? Uh, I know for me personally, the chicane coming out of the swimming pool section and then going into rast cast are the hardest two corners on the track for me just because you can make up and lose so much time there the corners that ferrari are going through right now in my opinion the hardest two on the track yeah we see him going through that and uh, it can be very tricky i know when i tried it sector two uh that chicane i've talked about it a couple of times in practice but that for me was a very difficult spot in order to get that car woed down to make that hard left-hander through the chicane. So very months. interesting, Kate but yeah, a lot of drivers were talking about sector three uh, wow. as a whole being an issue. So I'm curious to see how they will be able to handle that going through the race. 39 laps. And uh, do you think we're going to see any rain tonight? Um. Well, I certainly don't think so, but you know, we're right by the ocean, so it could change pretty quick around here. I That's know I've had mystery. races in the past where it just, the rain just like flips a lever, and I think especially if we get a red flag, which I'm not sure if we've had yet this season, there's a pretty good chance of it. Yeah, I do they even do red flags on this game? I'm kind of curious. I know they do, but I'm not sure where they're at. As Oh, it looks like Fry just got impeded by the Haas there. We'll, we'll touch and go there. I'm sure he isn't happy about that one. We'll see. I know he's got a lot of confidence heading into tonight's race, so we'll see how he does with that. Silent, thank you so much for the sub. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well out, out there. You guys, this is a wild race to watch. Our 13th round. Uh, Ferrari not on board with a 114.331. I know that time is going to get faster. As uh, the night goes on and qualifying, we have just over 14 and a half minutes left. So plenty of time to get those laps on the board. And Jacob absolutely blows it away with a 111.7. Bloomy 111.2. So we're starting to get some really fast times on the board. Yeah, it looks like everyone's starting to get focused and dialed in their laps. As it looks like Ferrari is going on a double push here after the incident on its first original flying lap. Yeah, I think he kind of had a reset after that incident and uh, try to get another fast lap out here. And we do have Polish Hammer. He is going to be racing his final race with us tonight. So we will definitely miss him. I hope he does really well in the race. Uh, drivers are not looking forward to how difficult this track is, but it's going to be fun to go here and see how they can handle it. But as you can see, once again, very, very narrow track, extremely hard to get around, and Ferrari not on the board with a 109.4, and Z, you were telling me, I think he's going to get a 109.3, and he is right there, so close. Yeah, it's an absolutely rapid lap, and it looks like it was set with a little bit of low ERS, too. I'm not sure where the fuel load was there, 
but certainly looked like there's at least a little bit more time to gain from him, and we'll see if anyone can even get close to that lap time. Lumi making his way into pits, but he has a 111.2, so he is looking very, very solid out there time-wise. Jacob with a 111.7, and I can tell you, we did not see Ferrari Nut uh, out on track and practice, but Kerr, he had the fastest time with a 111.6. Jacob had a 111.8, sitting second fastest. Mayor of Bag City had a 112.0, and Polish with was fourth fastest with a 112.2. And you can see right there, he's already a little bit faster, still sitting P4. So he's looking pretty solid right now. Yeah, he's looking very good right now. Unfortunately, we have our first retirement of the session with Skylin crashed it out of the Novell chicane, it looked like. So very unfortunate for him when their track is very important to qualify at. Uh, will he be able to get back in the session for the race, or is that it? It depends. I think if he starts on the hard compound tire and just plays for the safety cars, I think, or a hard or a medium, I think, and just plays for that safety car and then stays out as opposed to everyone else. I know track position is really important here, so if he can get that track position back in any way possible, I think he stands half a chance to get some points here tonight. Sober David, I'm impressed with him. He had a 112.1, so he's leading the 112s out there. The, actually, the only one in the 112s, uh, but is on the low side. He's sitting P6, just got uh, put down the board a little bit. Mayor of Bag City, 111.0. So he is up there also. Bloomy, a solid run so far. Jacob sitting P4, Polish fifth, Sober David in six. We have Hokey Fan with a 113.0. He's sitting P7, and oh no, it's Shames. Uh, last one with a time on the board, a 115.2, and just over 11 minutes left on the board. Yeah, and Slurp74 has just started his flying lap. I know he was coming up by McLaren. I'm not sure if he's still going for it, but this is another driver. I look at for being one of the main challenges for pole, if anyone else can really. I think he has the best pace around here, having raced with him previously. I think that he's the one who's going to challenge him if anyone will get close. I agree. I mean, he came in here. Uh, his first race with us was at Vegas. He ended up winning that race and went back to back. Uh, winning the next race at Belgium. So he already has two wins on the board. Last week we saw, saw Mayer win, so he got his third win of the season. But I, I agree, Slurp, uh, I have not seen what he can do out here. But if he does anything like we've seen the past few weeks, he is definitely going to compete uh, very well with Ferrari Nut, and it'll be a lot of fun to watch. Yes, it will. It looks like there's a car in the wall. I think it was Justin, but it looks like he's got it going again. I'm not sure if there's any damage on that car or not. But he was definitely pushing it really hard, as you kind of have to here. I mean, it's all or nothing at this track. Passing-wise, what is going to be the best spot to uh, make a pass if you can do so? Oh, there's always the people who love the dive bombs into Raskas into the final corner of Anthony No. Those last two corners are a big popular spot for dive bombs, I know, especially. And then really, if you can get a good run out of turn one compared to anyone else, we're really going towards turn one. I know that's also a popular spot to overtake with a few limited opportunities you have around here. All right, well, let's go on board with Kerr. We're going to take him through. Uh, well, he goes into pits here, so let's see if we can get another driver out here and we're going to miss that one. Jay Mack, he is Justin going through the, yeah. Jay Mack going through those final couple of corners there that, he, uh, that Z was talking about and then heading through that first corner. That's going to be another tricky part as these drivers start off. I have 15 drivers. Turn one, lap one. I talk about it every single race, so if we can get through that, uh, I think these guys will start to spread out past the first few corners. But man, it is going to be a sketchy ride until that happens. Maddie, I see out there, she says, running late, got distracted by a squirrel in the driveway. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully the squirrel's doing good. Ferrari not 109.2. 
takes a couple, a couple of tenths off. Yeah, a tenth faster than what Z was anticipating, but he is out there. He warned me before the race, said, you know what, uh, I'm... I'm looking to do a different strategy tonight. I'm feeling strong, and uh, he thinks that he was about 0.8 faster than the next driver. We'll see how that uh, handles throughout the race, but I'm kind of curious. Will Slurp be able to catch up to him and keep up with him? He's at a 110.6 at the moment, so quite a difference between the time, but the night is still young. Yes, it is. That looked like earlier while we're talking that Bloomy also fell victim to the Novel chicane. Maybe he got distracted by the same scroll that Maddie was looking at as well. <laughs> it very well could be. So two drivers that are out in qualifying so far. Uh, we have Dion and Kerr who have yet to put down a lap. Uh, waiting till last minute. We have just over seven minutes left in qualifying. We'll see what Kerr can do as he makes his out lap at the moment. But uh, yeah. I'm kind of curious. He had a, uh, if I can recall this, a 111.6 in practice. And that would right now put him at sixth place. We'll see if he can make any better in qualifying. Yeah, I think he's got a little bit more pace than that. It seems like the drivers seem to not want to show their full pace in practice. You know, something about, you know, keeping it a question of who's going to be where, even though we kind of have them set groups but at some different tracks it's completely different mix up i agree we've seen this uh as the case for many many rounds that these drivers don't really go out until the final part especially kerr he always seems to hold his cars very close to his chest and uh waits till the final part to put out that lap time and it's usually very very good so i think he will do something really great uh probably in the top three to five in position wise we'll see what happens but ferrari nut is the fastest so far with a 109.2 and maddie you should totally uh put that squirrel in discord i want to see it we have so many squirrels on our street it's crazy they're so cute looks like kerr with a pretty solid laugh there on 111.2 which is four tenths up on what he's setting practice it looks like he also tapped the wall in sector two can't exactly remember where but Definitely looks like if he wants to go for another run, there is time to gain on those in front. There is time to gain, and you can see just how narrow it is. I've talked about it before, but man, these turns just suddenly left, right, back and forth. I mean, you have to be on the ball. You have to do this for 39 laps, so uh, it's very technical. You have to make sure you know what you're doing, and you have to expect what the driver is going to be doing in front of you. If they're going to be braking sooner than you, you can see Kerr going right past that chicane. And I can tell you, I did that so many times in practice. Uh, I was not good here. It's better that I'm in the booth, I can assure you. <laughs> yeah, something about that turn going down in that Novel chicane. I think they put magnets in it so that your front wheel will hit it more often just to make the race a little more exciting because I hit it way more than I hit any other corner on the track. I, I can see that. Absolutely understandable. Maddie has a watch streak reached 30 stream streak. How about that? Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Evan, how you doing out there? Hope you're doing well. Thank you for tuning in. It is going to be exciting and scary. A hundred percent. I'm excited for it. And I'm also excited that I'm in the booth, uh, <laughs> not out there. And I think other drivers would be excited about that also. <laughs> I think you do great around here. Mm. I think I think you'd be able to survive. If I if I went about five mile an hour, maybe maybe, we'll see. Maybe Ferrari driving, nut though. Driving the car you take to work every day. There you go. That that would that would probably do. I would I could do that. Now, do you think anyone can beat Ferrari nut at a 109.2, or do you think we'll be seeing him sitting uh, on pole? I think we have our full sitter, and I think we have our full time. I don't think he's going to go out there and use that third set of tires because knowing him, he's going to want them for the race strategy, especially with what he said to you earlier about going on a different race strategy than normal. Uh, the soft tire, usually not a player here, so I would be shocked if he goes out on another new set of tires here. Well, I can tell you he is in chat right now, says Frozen. You think I should leave it here? 
That's up to you, Ferrari. Are you going to go out on those softs and uh, put a little bit more wear on it? We'll see what happens. But, you know, um, all these guys are on the soft tires. They don't want to wear them out. They, If they're going to use them, uh, you know, they're going to try to save those as much as they can. But from what I'm hearing, the soft tires do not last as long uh, as they were hoping. So I think as usual for the past few rounds, I think mediums and hards are going to be the way that they go. Some of them, we always see a few on those softs, but uh, medium hards are going to be the, the name of the game tonight. Yeah, especially because it's a track where, you know, you want as much grip for as long as possible. I mean, there's, if you're really not in a super close race, you don't want that extra grip now and lose out on them later. You want that grip through the whole stint, especially because you make one wrong move, and one little bit of understeer, you're straight smack dab into the wall. It's so true. Uh, Ferrari Net replied, said, nah, I might need him for an emergency. So he is, in fact, going to save those tires and J-Mac going through that chicane in Sector 2. Uh, you can see he was waiting right there to get back on the track, but that caution, uh, we have another one in Sector 3 here. Not quite sure what happened. That's one thing. I wish we had replays, but you can see Mayor of Bag City waiting, and uh, they are off and running once again. Yeah, it looked like one of the McLarens. I'm not sure which one. I think it was Jacob. Uh, just kind of overcooked it a little bit in there, and I think he kept it out of the wall, so he'll be able to get this lap going. If he didn't kill the tires too bad, we'll just have to see how it plays out for him. Just over a minute and a half left on the board. Can Slurp uh, improve that time anymore? He's at a 110.6. We have a caution in sector one and two. Now just one, and it's cleared. But these drivers, I think we're going to see some uh, front wings absolutely destroyed. Maybe some one or two car incidents. Uh, well, especially at the start, I think we're going to probably see a little more than that. But I got to ask you, Z, do you think we're going to see a safety car tonight? I have varying uh, opinions on that. I think we're 100% going to see a safety car this race. I think it would take some sort of Hail Mary miracle to not get one around <laughs> here. I agree. I agree. I know Mayor said, you know what? They have a different way that they go about uh, bringing out the virtual safety cars or the safety cars. He thinks that we will go absolutely safety car free. And Justin has retired after you see him on the track and pieces of his car just laying around. So we'll see him back in the race, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a virtual safety car or a safety car, either one. Uh, Stratus, what's up? I hope you're doing well out there. How you doing? And what it looks like to me is that a lot of drivers messed up. They were going for a quick lap with about a minute and a half to go in the session, and they all kind of, a lot of them backed out with it, whether it be mistakes or someone else being there to hold them up or a couple of things. It just looked sketchy, sketchy, sketchy for them. Like they just weren't able to get a good lock down. And Slurp is absolutely flying on this lap over two tenths up in the second place. He is, and you can absolutely just see uh, how sketchy it is as he's trying to get his way through here. Um, you know, Slurp has retired. He obviously did that one yeah. on purpose, but <laughs> you can yeah, just tell how sketchy like he, it was. He jumped the uh, one of the chicanes, it looked like. He jumped the, uh, one of the swimming pool chicanes and it invalidated the slap. So obviously he saw no more reason to continue. Right. Mayor of Bag City like going through the chicane, another part of it. Coming around, will he be able to uh, increase his time currently on the board with a 111.0? We'll find out in a second if he is able to uh, get any better time whatsoever. 110.7, 110 so he does get it a few tenths quicker than what he had before. Third on the board headed into the race here tonight at Monaco. Unfortunately for him, I know he would have been thinking about that the whole time. He just missed out on taking P2 from Slurp there. Probably just one messed up corner resulted in that and ended up uh, lap, lap time being lost there. Yeah, so for tonight, we have Ferrari Nut on the board, sitting pole with a 109.2. Slurp is going to be P2 with Mayer in third. Polish Hammer going to be fourth. Justin is going to be fifth. And Kurt is going to be six with Bloomy Doll 
Uh, in seventh, eighth is going to be Jacob. Sober David in ninth, and tenth is going to be J Mac Attack. Yeah, a really solid session from J Mac there. He looked pretty strong in qualifying. Looks like, you know, he was talking about how he was lacking a little bit of confidence around here, but it was very good for him to get a good lap down. And I think that, you know, he's close to a couple other people in the point standings. So, you know, getting a points finish here would be pretty good for him. Oh, absolutely. Uh, speaking of points, while we are waiting, let's see if we can uh, look at the points here. We have Ferrari Nut. He is in the lead with 240 points with Mayor of Bag City in second with 192. Polish is in third, and this will be his final race with us. We are super sad. 170 points with Kerr in fourth with 151. And rounding out the top five is it's Z46 who is with me in the booth tonight at 76 points. And he has not raced the entire season and already has 76 points. So that that's crazy. Yeah, it's, I've just been able to get a, some good consistent results. I had a couple races that were just kind of iffy and, you know, but I found my groove and it was good. I think that if as long as you know slurp keeps it clean here he should overtake me but you know that just means we'll have a good battle for fifth in the standings between us because you know we're around about in the same pace area on tracks it differs every track some tracks he's faster than me some i'm a little faster than him but you know i enjoy racing with him and it should be an enjoyable battle to watch all right so for the guys out there watching what is your experience on f1 how long you've been racing Z, did I lose you? Uh, no, I just, my, my headset died. I had to uh, <laughs> plug it in really quick. Gotcha. But yeah, look at, I'm looking through the race director right here while everyone's using their tires. It looks like Ferrari and Hokey Fan are the only people on the soft compounded tires to start after Ferrari. It looks like it's hard tires down to fifth with Justin. Kerr and six on the medium, Bloomy and Jacob on the hard, sober. David on the mediums, J Mac starting on the hard, Hokey, as we talked about, is on the softs, and the JC on the hards, Shames on the mediums, Skyland on the hards, Dion on the mediums, and RC Action is uh, on the medium tire. RC Action getting in on the action tonight. Uh, and as I was saying earlier, when you had to plug in your headset there, I got to ask how much, uh, how much you have on f1 how long you've been racing on there uh my first game was f1 2020 but i didn't play that too much the first f1 2021 was the first game where i really started getting going into it uh 22 was the first one i had a wheel and uh we're at f123 now and this is the first time i'm doing league races so maybe oh, nice. next year you know we'll get some more first like uh winning a league race would be pretty nice, especially in this one. Although Absolutely. I've had some uh, some bad luck in the past and some user <laughs> errors. Oh, the five lights. Oh, uh, I forget we have a formation lap. I was formation lap. Again, You're getting so excited about this crown jewel out here. But yeah, we have three drivers on the soft tire compound. Uh, we always have a few. I'm always shocked. But yeah, these these guys always testing the limits and Ferrari Nut is going to be one of them. You can see him out on pole and Maddie says, dang it, Z first the wheel and now the headset. Headset is just yeah, fine. It's, it's back. <laughs> We're back. It just needed to be plugged in. It was dying. Saw it right there. The tire strategy was going to be mediums to hards. We'll see what these guys do. It's always going to change it up if you get those safety cars. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Hopefully we get none tonight. We've have, had a couple of races that were kind of riddled uh, with safety cars and virtual safety cars. So hopefully tonight will not be one of them. Yeah, hopefully it won't. I mean, it's always great to see some good racing around here, especially when you've got drivers close to each other, pushing each other to go faster and faster around here just seeing how much you can push the car, how much you can push the tire. And just, it's a real test of driver skill out there. It absolutely is. And man, did you guys see that scenery out there? So beautiful. 
Uh, I would get very distracted. Oh, we already have, who was that in the wall? Was that Slurp as he is doing the formation lap? I mean, uh, <laughs> if that's the case, I'm a little concerned uh, as we get ready to go green, but man, you can tell just how narrow it is, just how challenging it is. It's something that these drivers will have to look out for, but we are ready for these lights to go out here at Monaco for round 13. If they get gridded up. As it looks like Bloomy has gone a little bit over, Hokey has gone a little bit over, so both Alpines will be starting quite a bit farther back in their grid box than they would have been hoping, which is going to stink a lot, especially around here. Right, these guys are ready. The lights are on. Just waiting them for to go off here at Monaco. Here we go. It's going to be a wild start as they come around the bend right there. It's trying to go single file. So far, it looks okay. Justin tries to make a pass over Kerr, takes it back, and Kerr is going to be fifth. Justin in sixth. These guys single file, and that is the only way they will survive this as we already have one in trouble and that is going to be rc action who just joined us in for tonight yeah unfortunate for him it looks like there isn't too much damage on that wing i mean if there's any i mean you kind of have to replace it around here but fortunately he's able to keep it going hopefully he can have a better race than those first couple of Going through the tunnel here, getting ready to enter into that tricky chicane. You're going to hear me talk a lot about that. It was uh, my number one enemy as I was on the track, but these guys seem to handle it okay. It seems to be just a me issue. <laughs> but Slurp right behind. He's about a second behind. Mayor of Bag City, 1.6 back. Polish Hammer in fourth. And uh, there's not a lot of room to go too wide and remind everyone where the best spot is to pass out here, Z. There's a couple of good ones. This first one is going to be going down into turn one here. A lot of people like to try to make use of this corner. Sandoval, they call it. And, you know, one of the famous lines in this game is the race engineer saying, no heroics into Sandoval, please. <laughs> As a lot of people's races have ended before they've even completed turn one. Another one you're gonna, another good spot to overtake here is going into Mirabeau. It's another hard braking zone, which gives you another opportunity to at least get a wheel alongside. I've seen a couple people try to make a move down into this hairpin, but it's really not a good idea. It'll usually end up with someone in the wall. And then the last decent overtaking zones aren't until Sector 3 going into Barras Cast and Anthony Nose, the final two corners. we go getting ready to enter into sector three we're on board with polish hammer just uh, the scenery around it is just phenomenal you can see the yachts out here lining monaco and uh you call it the pool section is that correct yes the swimming pool section as you can see through sector two into three there that little bump the double chicane there the reason the track goes like that is because there's an actual swimming pool there all right, very interesting. I did not know that, but uh, Ferrari Nut getting the fastest lap out there. Already a three and a half second gap uh, over Slurp. So he is just absolutely running away with this on lap three of 39. Meanwhile, Polish Hammer is under a second from Mayor of Bag City. The same with Kerr uh, from Polish. And then the next back is going to be Bloomy, who is just 0.4 back from Leave Justin. This is a battle that is heating up, possibly a change in position as Justin really uses those brakes to get around this corner uh, as we head into sector two. Yeah, it's really close between these two. I can tell you Bloomy's using a little bit of that battery and Justin's probably using a little bit of defense because he is all over him. Those medium compound tires working a lot better for Bloomy than the hards are for Justin at the moment. We have a four man battle right here. It is between Justin, Bloomy, Jacob, and Sober David is gonna be the final car in this pack. But man, there is always some great battles throughout here. Jacob is gonna be right on the heels of Bloomy, just putting the pressure on and he cannot afford to make a mistake. Uh, if these drivers have to break super hard getting into the corner and he is not ready for that, that can mean disaster for not only him, but Bloomy and Justin, who will also incur damage. So these guys do a phenomenal job.
trying to keep it clean uh, and get these cars home in one piece. Yeah, you said it. The name of the game here is trying not to make any contact with anything around here, whether it be a wall, a driver in front of you. As unfortunately, RC Action has picked up a three second penalty for track limits, pushing it a little too hard, and Dion is in the pits for a set of medium compound tires. On his way out, we'll see what happens here. But Sober David gains a position over Bloomy. He's going to go move back to ninth, and Sober David goes up to eighth. So, so far, a great start for David. We'll see if he can't gain a couple of more positions. But man, I want to stay on board with him as you can just see how sketchy this is, how close it is. And uh, these walls are very unforgiving if you make just a slight mistake. You break too late, get on the throttle too early. It can mean disaster for those wings, for the tires, uh, for many things. So these drivers are doing a great job. Kerblam, I see you out there. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'll be talking to you Friday. And one person who's got to be really happy about all this fighting going on ahead of him is J-Mac right now. As, as a couple of laps ago, he was a little over three seconds behind ninth place. And now is around about two and a half seconds. So we'll see if you can keep pushing the car and closing that gap a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You can see him just getting around these corners, uh, just so extremely technical going through each one of these. As soon as you're done, it feels like as soon as you're done going through one corner, you have like several more that you need to get through. And then you can really get on that throttle, but you have to nail these corners. If you do not nail them and you're able to get that corner exit, off you lose all momentum and the ability to catch up to the car in front of you so it's just so important to really nail those uh, exits and make sure you have that speed getting forward yeah and one person who has been nailing the exits compared to the car in front of him right now is jacob as he is all over the rear wing of justin right now maybe looking to make a pass in the sound of thought but he lifts up a little early not wanting to make the pass there yeah, I can see how that can be really scary, a little sketchy, trying to determine when is the best spot to uh, make a pass. You can see him just a phenomenal pace going through those corners and he gets right on the back part of Justin's car. We'll see if he can't make a move here, but man, I don't know that there is any good spots coming up uh, that is gonna be a good spot to make a pass maybe through the tunnel section, uh, but we do have a caution in sector through in that sector two, and that's gonna be right at that chicane. He is off and running, but I do believe that is going to be perhaps Dion that had an issue. It looked like it was Dion there. Is maybe he was just getting out of the way for Ferrari because I know he was on the way to lap him. Uh, as you, you can see now, the rest of the front runners, Slurp, Mayer, Polish, and Kerr, all getting rid of the lap as Dion is headed into the pits for what will be his second pit stop of the race. Such a uh, such a powerhouse out here, Ferrari. Not 8.9 seconds uh, of a gap between him and Slurp already to nine. So that just is going to continue to increase and. Uh, reminder, he's on those soft tires. Meanwhile, Slurp, he's on the hard tire compound. Soft tires are not going to last as long as the hard tire compound. And by how much will that not last? Uh, softs compared to hards there, Z. Oh, easily, it's easily a 20 lap difference with these tires. I mean, you can easily go half the race with a set of hards. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could try to take the softs that far, but I mean, they'll be screaming at you the whole time. You won't have grip anywhere. You won't be able to put the power down. It'll just be a struggle. As I mean, you can see Ferrari now already starting to struggle with the tires. It looks like he's lost about half a second in that second sector of the Yeah, he sure has. Uh... I, I got to think that those soft tires are going to wear on him. He did tell me he had a different strategy tonight, and he has been coming into these races with a different strategy. Unfortunately, uh, something happens at the start of the race, and that obviously is going to change his strategy. And then we've had a couple of late uh, safety cars. So, so far, it's been a clean race, a clean start here. Lap 8 of 39, still plenty to go. But Ferrari Nut is 
just uh, dominating out here so far. Almost nine and a half second gap over Slurp, but uh, we'll see what Slurp can do. He's got the hard tire compound on. He might last out here a little bit longer and maybe catch up to Ferrari Nut. Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility, especially because looking at about where Ferrari Nut would come out with, if I change my uh, gap over to gap to the leader, he will come out in that 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth place battle which is really bad for him because none of them are going to want to give up position to him because if they do that, they'll be losing time to the car in front of him, which is really interesting. So you got to think that Ferrari just has to keep extending the stint out on these soft tires that just aren't going to last. I'm kind of curious how long he will last, especially at the speed that he is running at. Uh, how long do you think he will last? 20 laps, 25? What do you think? I'm not so sure about 20 laps. I think he'll get into the middle to high teens uh, with these soft compound tires. I think anywhere after lap 13 is when I think we could start to see him thinking about hitting here because obviously I don't think he wants to do a two-stop around here because that would involve him having to cut loose some traffic. So I would assume he's going to go on to a medium or probably hard compound tire around here. So I would give him to after lap 13 is when I think he's going to Take a look at this battle between second, third, and fourth. And we just saw Polish just nudge the wall a tiny bit. He was right on the back part of Mayor of Bag City, but uh, Mayor really put the pressure on Slurp. You can see it directly ahead as we move through this chicane here. But Mayor has a penalty. Polish gets a penalty right behind him as they both go through the chicane. So three drivers so far with a three second time penalty. And that's gonna be a huge relief to Slurp as they were really putting the pressure down on him. They were really hounding on him there. I'm assuming they mostly picked up their penalties through either turn one or that chicane you were just talking about as those are, you have to push the car so hard through there in order to have a re good resemblance of lap time. As it looks like Slurp might've gone a little bit wide there and I wouldn't be surprised if he's gotten a track limits warning for that one. Very, very possible. These guys are absolutely moving and the pressure is on. I mean, Slurp, you know he is fully aware of the drivers behind him that really want that position. Mayor, he knows he has to keep it clean. He's got that three second time penalty. He's gonna have to stay within uh, a certain amount of time between him, Polish, and Kerr since he is directly behind. He is gonna be in competition for this since the two drivers ahead they both have a penalty yes they do and one man he's very happy right now is definitely slurp not only because the two drivers behind him have three second penalties but polish has been falling off a little bit and it looks like he might have hit the wall as he was sideways through that novel chicane and kerr now takes the position from him not sure if that car is still completely intact. We'll have to see if he dives into the pits. It looks like he might be missing a front left end plate, so I wouldn't be shocked if he's diving into the pits this lap. Yeah, you know he's having some difficulty steering, and uh, that is going to be tough. We have Kerr that goes into pits also. So two drivers on pit lane. Uh, Mayor of Bag City, Slurp, and Ferrari Nut are still out. Ferrari Nut is on the soft tire compound, so I'm kind of curious. Will we see him come in shortly? It's lap 11. Uh, Z thinks probably in the teens. We'll see what happens. It might be soon coming up. That's it. Well, I can only imagine how bad those soft compounds of tires are screaming at Ferrari. Please, please put on a different set of tires, but I don't think he's done with them quite yet. I think he's got a couple more laps. He wants to ring out of those tires. I mean, he's on the softs. He wants to ring as much pace as possible out of those tires. The slurp gets a three second time penalty for track limits. Talking to Ferrari not before the race, he says he did two full races to figure out which strategy would be better. And he said on the one strategy, he was able to lap the AI on a setting that would outrun most of the field. So. I'm kind of curious, is he on that strategy? Will the softs play out how he is hoping and expecting? It'll be uh, pretty interesting to find out, but second and third with those uh, time penalties, Slurp has now a time penalty. So 
uh, for Arena if he can keep this clean and uh, hopefully that strategy works out. We'll see him in victory lane and it has been a while. Uh, he last won at Canada. He has five wins in the season, but it has been about four weeks ago since we last saw him in victory lane. Yeah, and I know he's been itching to get back on that top step of the podium with all the practice he's been putting in. I mean, this is a track that just requires a lot of skill, but even more confidence as a driver. And Ferrari is a driver who just oozes confidence, so this just fits right into his skill set. And as we can see, he is absolutely gapping the field at the moment and still putting time on second place with those 12 lap holes. Soft compound tire compared to a hard compound tire, which you would think would have started to regain some pace on him. We have uh, five drivers that have gone in to pit. Uh, our top drivers have yet to come in, but four drivers with a penalty. Still, I think we're going to see more uh, tonight, but Ferrari Nut stays out. Lap 13 of 39, he's going to be catching up. I do believe that might be RC that he is going to be catching up to here. We'll find out in a second, but uh, we'll see how he's able to get around. And then it's going to be a while until he makes it to another car, so he should be in the clear for a while. Yes, we just had a good overtake from Blooming over to Kings and P11. Now it looks like we have a McLaren at the wall at Rascast, but I see keeps it going. I'm not sure what happened to Kerr. It's showing he's on zero lap tires, so he must have hit the wall and had to pit again here, which just has to be so crushing for him. Yeah, he went in and pit, uh, I think at the same time that Polish did, so I'm not sure if he had some contact when uh, Polish perhaps hit the wall, so might have been an issue between the two after he passed him. Not quite sure, but he has fallen to 13th and fell, fell a lot further than what Polish is. Very interesting to see that happen, but Slurp, he's got Mayer right on him as Mayer goes into pit lane. Is it Slurp? Slurp goes into pit lane here, so we'll see him make his first stop. And it looks like Slurp took off the mediums and put the mediums back on. I'm not sure if that's just a visual bug or not, but going for a two-stop here is definitely a brave decision. He has to be banking on a safety car or some other kind of yellow flags to help him through this in order to regain some track position. Do you think that was a mistake or do you think he actually meant that? Because if I recall, didn't that same thing happen to you where you uh, wanted to take a tire and it didn't get in? Uh, it's happened to me and it's happened to a couple other pe people this season where it just doesn't register the change you want made. I went back and looked through the race director and it did say he started on the hard compound tire. So this is a different set of tires. So it looks like he will be good to go to the end of the race. But as we have our first retirement of the session, Shames, and we have a full-blown safety car, and that's got to be crushing Wow. For yeah, absolutely. And you know, Ferrari not, is not looking forward to that also. Morgs, I see you out there. How you doing? I hope you're well. Jacob, uh, currently sitting P3. We're going to see a lot of these drivers make their way into pit lane. Uh, trying to get those tires and get everything situated, but uh, a couple of drivers not looking forward to the safety car, and a few are uh, very thankful for it. I feel like Ferrari's got to be pretty happy with this. I mean, I think he might be on a two-stop strategy here now, going out of the medium tire. I think if he pits again, he will be back onto the medium tire, but those soft compound tires are probably groaning in pain. Now he's going to be able to get some fresh rubber on and just get to lap the gap the field all over again, which, you know, I'm sure he isn't too upset about that, as it looks like Slurp has come into the pits, surprisingly enough, to put on the soft compound attire, which definitely commits him to a two-stop. So it's going to be interesting. It looks like we have a lot of different strategies in play now since that safety car occurred. Yeah, there is a lot of different strategies. I love to see how these play out. Uh, sometimes I wish that it would have... Uh, not had the safety car, but man, oh man. Different strategies here. Uh, you know some of these guys are taking a risk, but I, I agree with you. Uh, Ferrari not coming in, uh, being able to take fresh tires, that obviously is, is definitely gonna help him out here. But uh, Jacob, yes, up into third. I'm excited for him. We'll see if he can't keep that position. I would love it for him. Monaco, crown jewel, but extremely difficult. 
talking to these drivers, I can assure you, I, I was thinking that they were all going to look forward to it, and they're saying, you know what, no, I, I'm not looking forward to it. A lot of them were saying I couldn't even make five laps without hitting a couple of walls, so uh, it just goes to show you. You can see it here. It's narrow, it's technical, and it is very difficult to get here cleanly by yourself, uh, but also with 15 others. Yes, it certainly is, and some big winners on that pit stop, as you touched on, Jacob, up in the third place, get riding so high right now, Sober David in fourth, J-Mac up into sixth, and Skylin up into ninth, there's some big winners, and some losers are slurped down to fifth place, Polish in eighth place, and then Kerr down in twelfth place, all those guys, the kind of losers, kind of got caught out by the safety car, as they had already made a pit stop. Yeah, we've seen this a couple of times throughout the season where uh, safety cars come out at an inopportune time for some drivers and you see them drop way down. Uh, on the other hand, you have drivers, as you were talking, Z, of Sober David and a few others that definitely benefited from this. Uh, I'm curious, will they be able to keep that position, keep everyone behind him? Slurp is going to be on a mission. Kerr will be on a mission along with Polish. So... I'm kind of curious how this will go about after that safety car uh, comes in. I'm very curious to see how Sober David's going to play this because I think he's in the best spot out of anybody on the grid right now as far as tires and strategy to go because he's on the hard compound of tires which can easily go another 24 laps. And he's in fourth place. The only concern I have with his strategy right now is that Red Bull behind him with some fresh soft tires on him. I'm not sure if he's going to let him buy pretty quick or if he's going to try to play some defense. It's going to be a very interesting one to watch. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. I kind of want to see him play defense, but I don't want to see anyone uh, get injured in some defensive tactics here. So we'll see how it goes once we go back to green. Lap 17 of 39. We still have quite a bit of racing left not even at that halfway point so a ton left but ferrari nut he's sitting pretty up here gonna be leading the field once again he had a huge gap the first run i think we're gonna see that once again but mayor of bag city with that three second time penalty he knows uh he's got to keep it clean and keep slurp and pull a hammer behind him yeah it's gonna be very interesting for him now polish has a time penalty as well as slurp so i think mayor just needs to take a couple of deep breaths here realize he's in a really good spot as no oh. no polish has hit justin in the hairpin which will give him a five second penalty and that's got to be crushing not what he needed or wanted at all eight seconds total and he just said in chat and i guarantee this happened because he was in chat Said report from the Williams garage, Polish Hammer has been driving with a sharp shooting pain in his neck since the race start. And then magically a five second penalty happened after he wrote that. So uh, unfortunate to see here, but safety car will go in this time around. We will go back to green on lap 18 of 39. And man, could you imagine being in one of those yachts, having that view? That'd be pretty amazing. I can only imagine. It is one of the <laughs> dreams that's never going to come true around here because I don't think I'll ever have enough money to even own the anchor for one of those yachts. <laughs> I hear I you. I assume we're going to see Polish diving into the pits relatively soon to serve that five-second penalty as well as getting a new front wing on their format. Slurp and Sober David swapping positions a couple of times and David took it back. Slurp going to be right behind him looking to make yet another pass and hopefully it sticks this time around. David hoping to defend it takes a look on the inside to try to get around him. Thinks twice of it, but there are a lot of cars directly in front. We're going to have to stick in this train right here. Some contact we have. Who is that right there? I didn't necessarily see it. it. It looked like it might have been one of the ghosted cars that had a little bit of contact with the wall. Yeah, it was a I'm ghosted exactly car. I'm trying sure. to figure out who that was. Maybe Dion is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what it looked like for me. I wasn't quite sure. On board with Ferrari, yeah, but... We have, 
we have ghosting on for lap cars, especially around this track, because I think it would be an absolute mess to get that sorted out. I agree. I agree. But then again, you guys have heard, heard me say this several times. I, I want to see him unghosted. Let, let, if we're going to play this uh, realistically, I want to see him unghosted. I want to see these guys have to maneuver through the lap cars. It is realistic. Uh, but also, if I were driving in this, I'd absolutely want them ghosted. So <laughs> I can see it both ways. Real, I see you out there. What's up? Hope you guys are doing well. A great race here at Monaco. Uh, Ferrari Nut is just an absolute powerhouse out here. Already almost two and a half seconds in front of Mayor of Bag City and just uh, being on board with him. Again, I will say, look how technical this is as we head through the tunnel. Going right into the chicane. Uh, just uh, phenomenal driving by these drivers. Yes, it is, and Slurp playing this very passively. I think he knows that if he needs to make a move here, it's got to be an easy one because he still has another pit stop to make, and there's really nobody else around him threatening him pace wise. I mean, J Max three and a half seconds and falling a little bit off, and I think Slurp's just waiting patiently for his time to come, but it's just got to be eating at him as he's just on that soft tire and can't get by this now you're on the hard tire it takes a lot of patience to be able to stay behind a car this long yeah this is going to be one of his last moments of the lap here to try to get uh, a pass in unable to do so and you can hear him really gearing it up right here trying to find some speed some momentum to make it pass but these corners <laughs> i i can't imagine trying to make a an overtake here just uh quite a list of impossible at this track. Yeah, in order to take an over to do an overtake around, I've heard some people say, you know, you need to be over a second a lap quicker than the car in front of you and be able to trust that driver you're overtaking with your life around here because, I mean, even if they make one wrong move, it might end up leaving on the wall. I, I agree. I mean, uh, you're going to have to try to send it into these corners, but trust your brakes enough to know that your car can handle it. And not only that, but you're gonna have to trust the guy that you're trying to pass that he's not gonna take you out as you're trying to maneuver around here. But man, those lines, I'll say it, every time I think, just see these lines being taken, uh, it's just so sexy, I'll be honest. Just the way you guys maneuver around these corners and you just make it look so easy, so flawless, and yet it is so difficult. Uh, it's just a beautiful thing to see. It sure is. Being able, watching drivers throw cars into tr corners and just having them stick into every corner, watching them. I mean, even just watching this battle right here with Slurp and Sober David, I mean, it's just two drivers going at it. And it looks like Slurp might have half a chance here to get the overtake done. Yeah, he's going to get on the inside and he's going to overtake Sober David as we head into this uh left-hander right here and immediately into a right-hander so great job by slurp extremely patient there and right before those corners we saw him almost touching the rear tire of sober david as he was just trying to put the pressure on him try for him to make a mistake and try to get by him but he was able to do so he sits p4 jacob is going to be p3 uh slurp is about 2.5 behind him and closing down on him. So we'll see when these two make some contact here. Yes, he is. Slurp has got to be getting his mindset on, all right, I've got past this car. Now I need to throw down some solid laps and get close to this McLaren in front of me. Because not only does he have to get close, he has to overtake and then put three seconds on him in order to get the position truly sealed off. Yeah, you know, one of the concerns being on soft tires is how much tire did I waste? trying to make it past sober david how much more can i give to make it past jacob uh these are all things you have to take in consideration when you're out here on track trying to gain positions and put people behind you he is one of the only ones with the soft tire compound and as z said he will have to make another stop and uh so he really has to get moving and has to put as many people behind him as he can before he has to go in yeah, and it looks like Slurp is just driving frustrated right now. I mean, I feel like, you know, he feels like he has way more pace than where he is. I mean, that three-second penalty has got to be eating into him right now. 
staying behind David for as many laps, just eating at him. And he's just, as you can see, there were a couple of points earlier in the lap where he just kind of touched the wall a little bit, gave it a little kiss. But um, definitely a little frustration starting to build for Slurp here. I, I agree. And frustration for some drivers can be a great thing. It puts a fire underneath them. You'll see them gain some momentum. But more often than not, we're going to see that frustration uh, turn out to be some penalties and some mistakes. And that is something that he cannot afford as he already has three seconds on the board. Mayor of Bag City in front of him has three seconds, but Slurp already looking to make a pass over Jacob, putting the pressure on him already as they go into this left-hander here. We'll see what he can do, but uh, they're going to be coming out, going another right, and then hopefully he can make something happen. But man, it is going to be difficult, and he's already lost a little bit of momentum to Jacob coming out of that exit. Yeah, he's definitely lost a bit of momentum, but one thing he's also starting to lose is that soft tire drift advantage here. Now, eight laps into the stint, those soft tires are starting to wear noticeably more than the medium tires would be at this point in the race. So you got to wonder how much he's taken uh. out, and he's just pushed it a little bit too hard, and now he's got six seconds of penalties, which at the moment would put him back Ooh. into seventh, and he clips the wall coming out of Raskas such an easy thing to do here as you can tell he's definitely just frustrated with himself yeah frustration takes over and when i mentioned those penalties can incur from it here we go and you saw him going through there that tire those tires went over that boundary so uh the track limits there tested and uh, he's got six seconds on the board not what he wants to see still hanging out with jacob still putting the pressure on him but now he's gonna have to try to make up six seconds in penalties and try to make his way around Jacob with it, which is going to be quite difficult as Jacob just showing in practice and qualifying and in the race, he's got the speed and consistency. Uh, so yeah, he's doing really well. And one thing Jacob has to be mindful here is that, you know, even though he's got to keep slurp behind him, he's got to pick up the pace because sober David is just ever so slight slightly starting to creep back into the conversation to the podium here so he just needs to make sure he keeps it clean and keeps it out of the wall i agree he's doing great p5 so far i would love to see him in the booth tonight uh if top five is fantastic we'll see what he can do but man he is all over slurp and jacob uh we'll see if this continues lap 25 of 39 he is also having a solid night. He's got Leaf Justin four seconds back behind him. J-Mac attack in seventh and Sky. He's going to be eighth. JC in ninth. Kerr is going to be out there in tenth, who is in pit lane, uh, getting a new wing uh, put, placed on. Polish Hammer sitting P11th, not the race he wanted to see. Uh, Bloomy 12th. Hokey Fan 13th. RC 14th. And Dion in 15th. I mean, they're, this is a great race. I don't see why these drivers hate it so much. I mean, we've got Jacob, David, and J-Mac all having fantastic races. But Leaf Justin's also having a great race. I mean, it's a chance to see some drivers we don't usually see on the podium get up there. And, you know, it's always a great thing to see new faces. I agree. It's so fun to watch these guys and see what they have out here on track. All right, Z, I got to put you on the spot. If you were out here racing tonight, where do you think you would end up? At the moment, I think I would either be in second or like 13th. I'd either be <laughs> all over the walls or I think I'd be round about at the midpoint between Mayer and Ferrari. I think, I think round about in that area, either second or third, I think would be a pretty decent spot for me at the moment. But yeah. Definitely don't know if I'd have the pace to challenge Ferrari not around here. Maybe maybe enough to keep him honest, but probably not enough to fully, you know, challenge him. Fair enough. Slurb has gone in to pit lane, uh, comes out in ninth. So he is no longer, I would imagine, yeah, he is going to be on that medium tire compound, no longer on the softs. Ferrari not still leading and take a look at this gap, 12.1 over mayor of bag city who has that three second time penalty but if the race were to end now it would not affect him as jacob is the next one 
and he is 12.3 back. So uh, he is safely sitting in second for mayor of Bag City. Sober David, 1.3 behind Jacob. We'll see if he can't make up some time, but Z, you race, you have so much speed, uh, but we've talked about it in the booth here, is that sometimes something always happens, something crazy. I don't know if it's the fuel strategy that doesn't get put in. There's uh, a tire thing that didn't get put in one time, but it feels like there's always something that uh, keeps you from getting in uh, on that on that stand there. Yeah, it just happens sometimes. It's, oh, Polish gets another three-second penalty. He's definitely pushing it hard but obviously a little bit too hard but yeah just to get back to that point I mean it's just the point of just not having that consistency yet it's still being a little bit fresh with the wheel with the whole league racing thing just not being able to be super consistent for you know over a race of a 50% race distance of just not having it there I think it's gotten better recently I agree. there's been yeah. a couple of crucial mistakes still but, I mean, even Mayer, I mean, he's had a couple mistakes, but he's keeping it clean. And, I mean, he's 13 seconds clear of third place right now, having a great race for himself right now. I think this is about as much as he thinks he could have asked from himself this race. And, yeah, as you can see, just, I mean, Ferrari having the most consistent race out of anyone. I don't even know if he has a track limits penalty yet. It seems almost effortless for him out there today. Uh, yeah, he's definitely zoned in, doing a fantastic job out there. Uh, I will be really surprised if I see a mistake from him. If he is on for that night, he is most definitely on. There's just no stopping him. And tonight is one of these nights. It's been a couple of races since we've seen him in victory lane. Uh, so, yeah, he is looking to make it happen tonight. But, Maddie, I'm with you. I would be a DNF. Uh, turn one, lap one. <laughs> I would be right there with you. We can uh, have a party in the grandstands. Hey, I mean, some people would argue that having a party in the grandstands at Monaco is even better than driving around it. So, you know, can't blame you for that one. I mean, well, you know, put me in a yacht and then I'd say, yeah, that's definitely the case. <laughs> That'd I mean, be fun. Definitely. If I'm if I'm in one of the yachts watch and go through here, I'd love to have that happen. Oh, yeah, that that would be wild to watch. I just hearing the roar of uh, these cars fly by would be absolutely Insane Jacob hits the wall coming uh, out of that corner there. Hopefully no damage for him as he tries to gather himself back up. No penalty, so he's good that way. Just need to get that mind back on track. It's very technical. He heads into a uh, pit lane here. Really unfortunate for him. He's got to be hoping that another safety car comes out. I'm not sure what tire is going on. It looks like it will be the soft as sober David now in Harris third place, but he's got to be careful because he has leaked Justin only a second and a half behind him. To keep him honest, if he makes any mistakes. Justin with those medium tire compounds. Sober David sitting third with the hard. So, like you said, we'll see what happens here. Uh, he's 15 seconds behind Mayer, so plenty of space between those two. But Kerr retired from the session. DNF, we have a caution, but no safety car, no VSC. So we'll see if they can uh, stay green here. And it looked like he retired in the pit lane, and it just seems like he was about done with tonight. I think he's had a couple of times where he's hit the wall or other people, a couple extra pit stops. It's just not his night. And from the looks of it, he was just about done with it as slurp. Picks up another three-second time penalty, putting his total up to nine for the night. Brutal. So heartbreaking for him. He had such a fantastic start here. Uh, but those penalties have stacked up for him in that Red Bull. Uh, Ferrari nuts still out there. 18.5 seconds in front of Mayor of Bag City at this point. Uh, he could stop, have a sandwich, and continue and be just fine. He is that far out ahead. No penalties for him, so no fear for him as they uh, have a safety car come out. Not sure what happened. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what happened there either. I didn't see anyone going slow or anything, but, you know... Looks like everyone's going to be able to throw. Oh, I see some debris in the Novel Chicane as the mayor goes through it there. It looks like somebody might have had an issue here. As I'd assume 
I don't know, actually. There's been a lot of pit stops already. You would assume a lot of people would, just about everyone would take it here, but I don't know if everyone has the tires left for that at this point. One man who does is definitely Ferrari nut, which it looks like it's a used set of softs, even though it reads zero tires. I'd assume this is a used set from qualifying. Yeah, he said he was going to save him uh, for later on the track, so... 31 of 39, I'm liking his strategy, Z. What do you think with the soft tire compounds? Uh, I think he's got a good run here. I don't, I don't think there's going to be a challenge for him at the end of this race. I think had it been anyone other than Ferrari who pinned onto the softs, I think it could have been interesting, you know? Right. As, ooh, Mayer almost getting jumped by Leafs Justin, who decides to stay out taking third place ahead of Slurp, Sober David, who's on a new set of softs, and then Skyland on the new set of mediums, J-Mac on a new set of softs, JC on new mediums, Jacob, it looks like he will be staying out, and then Polish, Lumi, Hoki, RC, and Dion have yet to get to pit one. Seven drivers on uh, those soft tire compound, and that's gonna help them in the final part of this race here. Uh, we see Polish Hammer go into pits. Bloomy on those mediums, and he is coming, making his way to box. Uh, so we'll see what he is going to be taking here. But yeah, a lot of these drivers coming out on the softs. Nobody on the hards right now. No point to take him as we don't have enough laps to have to worry about that. But Ferrari Nut uh, strategy has worked out. The safety car has worked out for him. Just uh, such a run tonight for him. Yeah, I mean, he just, I mean, he got pole position on the first lap, flexed the muscles a little bit more, went on the race, <laughs> flexed the muscles even more, said, look at this, guys. And he's, you know, feel like he, a little disappointed he hasn't been on the top step of the podium recently, and he's just reasserting himself like, hey, guys, you know, I'm still here. I'm the championship leader. You know, I'm, I'm here. You know, he's just reasserting himself. Slurp. Looks like Slurp dives back into the pits. Yeah, he goes back into pits. I was going to say uh, he may come out of this relatively good considering uh, what position he was in, but uh, he went back in there. I think so, that I'm he, kinda... spied a, he spied that he had a decent gap when they wouldn't lose that many positions to pit again and just get that one lap fresher soft tire than everyone else around him. Will that play a huge role in the final here as far as him making it through? I think it could, especially because if you look all the way up to third, it's Leafs Justin on 17 lap old medium tires. And I mean, That's everyone gonna be my next else question. around him is going to be struggling yeah. to get past him. And so that I think could bring Slurp right back into the conversation for P3. I agree, and I'm, I'm kind of curious about Justin, why he chose to stay out there on 17 lap old tires. Uh, maybe he thought this was his best bet to just try to hold on to many positions that he can. It's extremely difficult to pass here, so he knows guys are going to get uh, bunched up behind him trying to pass, and I guess he's hoping to try to defend that. Yeah, I think he's thinking, you know, it's Monaco. Track position is king. Why not give it a go, you know? He's going to have Sober David behind him on fresh sauce, which will be definitely scary for him. I hope we don't see any contacts into the first sector. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about it, I would like to rescind one of my previous statements and say, I forgot Slurp has nine seconds of penalty. So, <laughs> P3, not so sure if that's possible. But, you know, definitely I think he could get a top five here. Just kind of depends on how quick he can dispatch everyone else around him. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful, though. He's already got nine seconds, so you know he's going to be frustrated. He's going to be a man on a mission, but he has to make sure he does it cleanly. And that is so extremely difficult around here at Monaco's. I'm kind of curious how it's going to happen this first sector. I think we're going to see some chaos uh, starting off going back to green. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at Slurp's things right here. So he's got just trying to see, you know, how many warnings he has. And it looks like he has two more to burn through. And I mean, if you want to see a cool picture, if you go look at the race director and look at the drivers and scroll down a little bit, you can see some of the guys who have made 
four or five pit stops here, and you can just see the rainbow of tires they've used. Dion, three sets of mediums, three sets of softs, or he's been on the mediums three times. It's pretty cool to look at right now. Just something you don't see every day. Oh, for it looks sure. Like we have a safety car in this lap. Yeah, here they come in, and we were just taking a look at the tires, and all of them that the drivers have taken. But we are getting ready to come back to green. 34 of 39, so not a ton of racing left. You know if you want to make something happen, you have to do it here right now. Uh, you got to get it done, but you got to do it cleanly, and you have to make sure that your car can survive. But we are back. Ferrari Nut on the run. Already 2.3 ahead of Mayor of Bag City. So he is just a man on a mission. Mayor sitting pretty, but man, oh man, he's got Justin behind him a little ways and sober David already all over Leaf Justin trying to see if he can make it past, but uh, he's got to see if he when he can do it and he's got to do it quickly. Yeah, and Slurp's already made a move on J-Mac going from seventh to sixth position. And I think what happened, oh my goodness, voice crack. But I think what <laughs> happened there is uh, Mayer had a lap car in front of him. So he had he had to take the start at the rate of that lap car. As we have a yellow flag in sector two, and it's one of the Alpines. It's Gloomy, who has been another victim of the lethal Novell chicane tonight. Yeah, three drivers uh, no longer in the race tonight. 34 of 39 heading to 35. But we are still headed out here. Uh, no safety car, but Slurp 0.5 behind Skyland. Skyland 0.3 behind Sober David. So these drivers extremely close. Any position is up for grabs at this point. You just got to know when to make the move. And uh, if you're Slurp and you're trying to make the move, are you going to try to do it now or see what happens ahead of these guys? I'm not so sure that Slurp fits in Slurp's best interest to make a move here. Yeah, I mean, one mistake, you can get another penalty. If you got a move from Skyland on Sober Day, but it's not going to happen as J-Mac has now retired, and we have a safety car out again. Wow. So we'll have to see how this plays out. I can assume Justin will be very happy that the safety car is coming. Yeah, Justin uh, definitely benefiting from these safety cars. Still holding out uh, the top three podium. If he can hold it out for a few more laps, he will get a podium finish here tonight. Sober David right on the outside looking in. You know he can taste it. He really, really wants it, but he's got to hold off Skyland and Slurp and Jacob behind him. That's going to be a difficult task to complete. Uh, but if he, he can get it done, he's going to be super excited, and so will we. But safety car is out. Robbie Nutt, uh, no surprise here. He is leading the field with Mayor of Bag City in second, Justin in third, Sober David in fourth, and Skyland is going to round out the top five. And what's interesting to me here is Justin staying out, and really everyone staying out to this. I know it's a... Uh, conversation of not everyone having new tires but especially for Justin here it's just like he's on 21 lap old tires and it's got to be a case for everyone behind him to try to get past him as quick as possible because Mayer has a three second penalty so depending on when this race goes green there's an opportunity that second place is up for grabs so I know that's David and Skylin and maybe even Jacob down there are going to be really upset that Justin's out here on these 21 lap tires. <laughs> You're probably very correct on that. Uh, in my opinion, if I were Justin, my tires are already old. We're not putting a lot of damage uh, in the safety car, the speed that they're going. So he just says, you know what? I'm at the point where it would be really dumb for me to give up the spots. As you said, position is king as you're coming out here from a safety car. So. In my opinion, he's just saying, you know what? At this point, I can't go in. I got to deal with what I have, and hopefully I can keep as many positions as I can, maybe give these guys behind me a little bit of trouble and uh, defend what I have. But yeah, even as bad as that decision looked at the start, I mean, this second safety car makes it look like the greatest decision of all time because <laughs> we're going to go green with, like, two laps to go. Yeah. And, you know... That's even less time for the cars behind him to try to make the move on him. I mean, we saw Skyland trying to get a little aggressive here. I don't know if 
how aggressive David's going to get behind him, but, I mean, for from his perspective, it's got to be, you know, I stayed out. This safety car has helped me tremendously. I got to keep, I got to stay out, keep the position, and just defend for my life out here. Absolutely. I mean, Jay Mack has left the session here. Uh, so four drivers now that are out here. Just so unfortunate, but man, as Maddie says, this is going to be a wild restart. A wild restart, a wild finish. Uh, I think from second on back, anything can happen. But Ferrari Nut, I think this will be his race out here. Six win of the season, but uh, I don't want to jinx him. I don't want to call anything prematurely, but uh, he's just had an insane car here tonight. Just uh, very consistent, has the speed he needs. And JC with a five second penalty hitting his teammate Jacob. A severe collision, but the safety car will go in this time around. Yeah, and that's got to be killer for him because he was in the conversation for maybe even a podium this race, and this has just ruined that for him. Yeah, very uh, frustrating to see here. Uh, man, you can see these drivers gearing up, getting ready to go back to green. It is lap 37, getting ready to come to 38. This is it, you guys. I'm on the edge of my seat. Uh, as a viewer, I'm so excited about this race. I can see how nerve wracking it can be for these drivers, but they are back to green once again. And I am just keeping my eye. You got sober David all over Justin and he has to watch when he will woe that car down, get on the brakes so he does not hit the rear end and get that wing damage. You can see uh, Mayor of Bag City really getting on those brakes. You see a lot of smoke coming out here. But, uh, man, so close, Z. I don't know if you're watching this, but it is getting very sketchy. I'm, I'm on board with David right now. It's it's extremely sketchy. I mean, he's got to be itching to get by him. I know in his mind, had he got by him earlier, he would have had a chance for a second in this race. But now, that opportunity is gone. So he has to refocus in and look for the best overtaking spot to try to get third gear. And it might be out of the chicane here, but he's going to think better of it, as I think that probably wouldn't have ended well for him. Yeah, that would be a really rough spot here to try to make a pass. But man, oh man, what a race, a single file train moving through Monaco here as we get ready to head into the final lap with Ferrari leading the field. Mayor Bag City in second, leave Justin in third. Sober David still sitting P4 being uh, patient, but you know he's got to be getting a little frustrated as he knows that podium finish is right there in front of him. He can see it, he can smell it, and he can taste it. He definitely can. It's so tantalizingly close. He wants to just reach out and grab it, but it's Monaco. It's one of the only tracks where you really can't overtake Ooh. it. I mean, this was one of the best spots. He was going to have a Skyland. What a move by him. Maybe Skyland thinks he's got an opportunity to get past Justin here. Huge we'll power this move. One plays out. Yeah, Sky just dives it in and makes it stick right in front of David. So he's going to move back to fifth, Skyland in fourth, and he is going to quickly work on leave Justin out here trying to make a move, but Ferrari not still leading the field by three seconds. We'll see what these guys can do, but Ferrari not coming around the final corner. Let's see if we can bring him home as the winner here, the final couple of rounds. Uh, around the corner and to the front stretch. Here we go. Round 13 at Monaco. You can see him already celebrating. He is the winner here. Six race of the season. Six win. Congratulations to him. Mayor of Bag City in second. Great finish for him. Leave Justin going oh, to so keep that podium. From third and fourth. Yeah, Skyline side by side. Pushing him through the final corner. 0 0.06 at the line. Absolutely incredible. Sky going to get that fourth and sober David in fifth. Jacob in sixth. Polish Hammer seventh. Slurp with a rough ending sitting eighth. JC ninth and Hokey Fan tenth. What a race, Z. It was an absolutely fantastic race from my point of view. Cannot complain with that one. The rest of the day goes to Skyland, and I can't say that it's not well-deserved. I agree. Very good race from him. It was very, very sketchy. All right, let's get these guys in here, and I want to get Polish. It is his final race, so we'll get him in here also. I 
You know, these guys, a uh, wild, wild night. I'm already forgetting who I'm inviting you. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody should be here now. So whenever you're ready, go for it. All right. Awesome. Frari nuts. Man, uh, you warned me that you had a lot of speed in your car. You got the win tonight. You're six of the season. Strategy wise, did it go the way you were hoping and planned or uh, did we see a couple of hiccups? Rari Nut, you got a copy? All right, while we're waiting for him, Z, if you want to give Mayor of Bag City an interview for a second. Well, Mayor, it definitely wasn't an easy race out for you there in second. Couldn't be it's Monaco, so just go ahead and walk me through your race and how you felt through most of it. Dude, I, uh, this is my third season in this series. Uh... I was like three three repair wings per race the last last two years. So the fact I didn't ever have to stop outside of tires, awesome. Couple penalties, such as life, but never hit the wall once, and I'm is ecstatic. So second place was easily what I thought my absolute best would be, um, and we're we're really happy with the with in the Ferrari camp of how everything played out today. Um, car felt really good underneath me. I was hit my marks. It felt smooth. I knew I never was gonna have the pace of old Ferrari. This is like one of his he's a European god, so I'm not I'm not surprised he was uh as quick as he was, so I knew it was the best of the rest that I could be the best of the rest. So that was my goal. Um all race. Thirty points for Ferrari is awesome too. Chris pulled in fourth. Uh so that was awesome. Awesome to see Justin on the podium too. I thought that was a really good race. Um for me the safety cars were perfectly timed. Um so the first one I could have made it to the end just as Justin showed it was possible. Second time, um just helped me get on some fresh mediums again to be quick through the end so um overall i could not have asked for a better race um and it's just awesome to see the the me and chris both in the top five and good points all and can't really ask for anything more at a track like that yeah second place definitely not anything to scoff at here around monaco tell me about that last safety car i mean that three second time penalty you had to be at least a little bit worried that someone behind could have put a little bit of pressure on you to try to take that second place away. Yeah, it was huge. To, I, that was going through my mind. When I saw that last safety car come out, I was like, come on, no. Um, especially because we had somebody crash out prior to that and the safety car didn't come out. So I thought we were clear sailing to the end. So it definitely made me nervous. Um, but I knew that Justin was just on a very unique strategy. He had super old tires. So even two laps, I knew I needed two laps. Like one lap was going to be super tight, but two laps I should be able to gain two seconds. It helped also having a little bit of a buffer in um, the lapped car of RC Action. So him there, plus old tires, I was nervous, but I knew that I should be fine in the end to the end as long as um, I was able to keep it uh, between the walls. So I was. So it definitely made my heart race, but I'm glad I was able to lock in. I was down to my final warning. One more warning. It's in six seconds. I, I think I finished fourth or fifth at that point. So we will we will take um, we'll take what we got there. It was a lot of fun and, and shout out everybody who was watching today. And one last question. You were talking about how incredibly difficult it is around here to stay out of the wall, keep it clean, avoid penalties, and tell me just how relieved were you when the two behind you, Kerr and Polish. You saw them pit early, and how much yeah. easier did that make your race in order to you know keep it out of the wall and lessen the mistakes for time penalties? Yeah, dude. As soon as it's unfortunate, Kerr seemed like he was he was getting in the wall more than normal because uh, he dominated this race a couple years ago, so that was a bummer to see. Um, it seemed like Slurp was struggling the same way, same with Polish. So as soon as I saw them racking up the penalties, racking up the pit stops. I knew it was just I had to control what I could control, which is keeping the car between the walls. So I, I kind of backed off my pace just a little bit. I knew it was never going to touch old old uh, old Ferrari up there. I kid the stud out here. So I just had to focus on my race. And then especially once I got Justin and shout out David too. David had a great race once. They were like the cars directly behind me. I knew as long as I was smooth and quick, I should be able to build the gaps up and hold on to it. So um, I'm really proud of myself. I really didn't think I was going to be able to to do that with how I've done here the last few years and some of my races so far this season. So uh, ecstatic through the roof, man, and, and really thankful we got P2 and Chris in P4 today. It was an awesome result for Ferrari. Yeah, definitely can't take anything for granted around this track. Frozen, back over to you. All right, we're going to bring it back to our winner here tonight. Ferrari, you got a copy? 
Yes, I don't know what was going on there. My mic wasn't working for some reason. <laughs> All good. Uh, but man, uh, you brought the consistency, the speed once again tonight. I know we had a couple of safety cars and uh, that was topic of discussion <clears throat> before the race. Did the race go as you were hoping as far as strategy or did the safety cars uh, change things up for you? No, that was pretty much as intended. The first one, the second one was just kind of like a, eh, well, while we're here, um, kind of stop. You know, I had the, the 12, 13 second gap to do it under a safety car and get out in front of him regardless of what he did, regardless of what Tim did. So um, now first one was two laps shy of when I was going to pit under green anyway. And that would have been, you know, pretty minimal difference to anything if anything came out in the next few laps before everyone else pitted. Um, biggest thing around here is tire temperatures. Honestly, tire wear is, yeah, it's, it's something, but you've got to keep the rears under control. You can't be harsh on them out of the acceleration zones because that just chews them up. So the soft is not preferred if you can't do that, but if you can just kind of restrain yourself a little bit, you can definitely make it work. And as you saw at the start, I mean, I ran off eight, nine seconds in four laps. What was the most difficult part of the track for you? Uh, most difficult part of the track for me has always been the, um, it's always been the corner right after the Nouvelle Chicane to back the little left-hander. It's just an awkward corner for me. So it's kind of like that's the corner that gives me the, the heebie-jeebies a little bit. Fair enough. Uh, but your sixth win of the season, you did amazing out there. You had the speed. Uh, we saw it seconds uh, that you put on everyone with Justin a couple of laps. So great job out there. Uh, I got to know, though, was there any battles that you had within the race? Uh, I, I know you got away pretty early on, but was there any parts where you thought, mm, maybe I don't have this tonight uh, at any part of the race? Uh, just in my own head. And sometimes that is uh, what it comes down to is just in your head is, uh, can I do this? Can I get it done? But man, you, you had no penalties, kept it clean, had the speed. So great job tonight on the win. Thank you. I'll do you one more. No warnings. No. Oh, no warnings either. Okay. Great job out there for sure. All right, Justin. Podium finish out here tonight, sitting P3. And I saw that crazy battle at the finish uh, with you and Sky. Take us through your race and... Man, uh, you had some old tires out there at the end. Uh, yeah, that was really my a chance at it, I guess. When the last safety or the second to last safety car, I guess, came out, it was either pit and throw some softs on and and just kind of stay where I was, or just stay out and see if I can leapfrog people and and do the Monaco roadblock. Is what this track is, and I did it and ended up gaining gaining a spot and. It exactly played out like that. Got helped, I think, by the second safety car and was able to fend off David, who had a couple of chances. And then Skylin, right at the end, he made his way past David. And good thing it was only like a part, uh, a portion of a lap. I had to fend him off because he was all over me. So <laughs> I can bust the wing up against the wall, like a few corners left to go. And he was just holding on. But it was definitely uh interesting and I feel like that like clown suit amongst all the army soldiers meme <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> not exactly where i expected to be but that's really are. well uh the final safety car when you had the older tires did you think that you're going to be able to hold everyone off or were you just hoping uh that you could just keep them behind you uh i was just hoping to keep everybody behind me there was uh i kind of knew i was locked out of anybody ahead of me once i got to third and i restart so it was just park it and see what happens all right well i always see you have some great battles out there what was your favorite battle of the night uh all of my Battles basically were me blocking people, so I mean, I don't really know about <laughs> hand picking one, probably the Skyland one, just because it was side by side for the, the position at the end, I guess. Yeah, 0 0.06. So a great podium finish for you tonight. Congratulations on that. 
Uh, you are ninth in the standing, so a great season so far, and I think this will help you out uh, in points. Great job out there. And next week, where are we headed to? Silverstone. How do you feel about that? I've always been kind of like meh about that place. It doesn't like stick out to me. I, I like it. It's a good track, but I think I'm I'm pretty happy with that track overall. Should be a uh, another good race. All right, Hope, fair enough. Know, as good as what whatever the crap just happened, but. <laughs> Did you change your opinion on this track at all? Do you like it any better? Uh, ever since I actually learned to drive it, like, a few F1 games ago, I kind of have had the same mindset of I like it to, like, hot lap and practice on, but once you're around people, it is the worst thing on the planet. <laughs> and this race kind of proved it again, but, you know. It is fun to watch, though. It is what so. it is, I guess. Yeah. Great job on the podium. Z, if you want to give your teammates Polish Hammer... Uh, an interview. It is his final race out here. I suppose I could, but uh, <laughs> I mean, it was it was a pretty solid quality session. The race wasn't exactly what you would have wanted. I can assume. Kind of just walk me through what happened, and just what yeah, just really what happened with the race for you. Just a, uh, I don't know. Just like a lot of things went wrong. Pretty much everything that kind of went wrong went wrong. Uh, had a decent start, stayed up in fourth. Uh, my strategy went down, out the window five laps in. Like I mentioned, uh, I had this giant just sharpshooting pain in my neck for the first 15 laps. That was really hard to focus when I was just having to every straightaway, and there's not many straightaways, every straightaway having to like move my neck around so it would stop hurting. Um, but then I... Got that penalty, which wasn't ideal. Broke my wing, again, not ideal. Uh, pitted, safety car came out, and then I broke my wing damn near two laps into the next run. Uh, so I pit again, safety car came out, I broke my wing under safety car, got a five-second penalty for tapping Justin under safety car. Had to go in, serve that penalty, fix the wing damage again, did like 12 laps on old hards, one more safety car went out, and then I just waited for everyone else to retire because I knew people were going to be going for positions so i knew there were going to be a couple retirements um somehow finagled my way into a seventh place finish so i'm not displeased <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just kind of a when it rains it pours situation where it was just kind of everything that can go wrong did go wrong except for the fact that you still finished and got points so you know cannot complain about that but just kind of walk me through what's your favorite part of this race your last Last one for this season, at least, was? Uh, the Taco Bell I had 20 minutes before race time. That was my favorite part of the race. <laughs> um, besides that, I mean, I at least... My main goal was to not DNF. I think something I give myself the most credit for is, in this league, I've gone 31 races, never DNF'd a single one. Now, people might say that's not... That's pretty easy. It's a game. But with how much chaos we've had, especially in this season, uh, I think 31 races and not teen, I think a single one's kind of impressive. And I, 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 I'm very proud of myself for that. So I'm basically just glad I didn't DNF. That's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> and it's definitely not easy to keep the car out of the wall that many races in a row. And just one more thing before you sign off for the rest of the season. What was your favorite race of the season and why? Oh, man. Uh, I think it's definitely got to be either Australia or maybe like Coda, maybe Vegas. I know Vegas is a little bit of a... Vegas was definitely my favorite in terms of the battles that we had. Um, Australia is obviously going to be very high up on my list because of the fact that I won. Um, that's obviously going to be... Very happy my us. And then Coda, that last uh, lap battle between me and Kerr for the win was uh, some of the most fun I've had racing. So I'd say it's probably between those three. If I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Australia, though, just simply for the fact that that was my first and only win uh, of, the, of this league. So I'd have to pick Australia. 
definitely can't disagree with the logic there. Had a great season. I'm going to miss you on the other side of the garage, and uh, I wish you well in your bowling league. Ditto, buddy. Ditto. Uh, I will say before I sign off, uh, hopefully I'll be back next year. Uh, I'm not really sure what the plan is. Uh, that's why I'm kind of treating this as like a, this is my last race until XYZ. So I'm not really sure what the future holds. Hopefully I'll come back uh, I'll be stronger back. than ever. I hope so. I hope so, <laughs> but I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw anything out there and say, Hey, I'll be back when I, I really don't know. So I kind of just took this as a, uh, I'll be back one day, maybe I'm not sure, but I, I, I've had a lot of fun racing this league. Like I said, 31 really, really fun races. Wouldn't have traded it for the world. Everyone that, you know, treated me with kindness and respect, uh, raced me clean. People that I'll be friends with for a long time after this. Uh, very much appreciate every minute of it. Preach. And uh, I hope we have a good rest of the season. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> and I appreciate all the fans as well that uh, tune into every single race. Absolutely. You know, the, fan, the, fan, the fans that I have out there, Maddie, Chargers, uh, anyone else that Me. I might have out there, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it, 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 it was fun, and I hope I get to do it again someday. We do too, but it was a great season. You had a great season uh, once again this season. The improvements, you can absolutely see it. It was a lot of fun to watch, so we hope that you'll be back. But uh, man... What a wild ride for you in Ferrari Nut. What a wild race for you tonight with a, another win. Uh, next week, we will be headed to Silverstone. It should be a great race. I'm excited for it. Z, it was a lot of fun having you in the booth here tonight. I definitely enjoyed it. I might have to make another stop by sometime. There you go. No. Next week, we'll see You're him on the track, though, with a new wheel. So uh, we'll see him back out on track and... Uh, Trying to get uh, his first win with us in SMB. But until then, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. And so do the driver. So everyone have a great night. And uh, congrats on that win, Ferrari. See you guys next week.